Uh, I'm Xie Chen from China State Forestry Administration. I'm working for forestry economics and policy analysis. In, in China, um, there are long history uh, on forest restoration. Even when uh, when China just uh, uh, established in uh, uh, 1950s, uh, at that time in uh, eastern part of China, especially in the Yellow River, uh, old Yellow River part, the sandstorm and. Uh, very strong and uh, farmers uh, destroyed farmers' house and uh, farmland. So at, even at that time, uh, in China, when China was very poor, we already start forest restoration in uh, like uh, uh, short belt intercropping into the cropland to reduce the uh, natural hazard uh, disasters to protecting farmland to help farmers to gain more uh, agriculture output. Yeah, yeah, that's the early stage. And uh, um, when China opens to the outside world and the reform, we immediately start the, we call it Three North uh, Short Belt Program. It's occupied almost uh, one fifth of China. We call it Green Great Wall. Uh, it, uh, the program will last uh, from uh, the late 1990s until 2020. So it's a giant forest uh, restoration program in China. And um, in the late 1990s, when Chinese uh, economic uh, developed very rapidly and deforestation happened everywhere and it's caused uh, soil uh, erosion, water soil erosion and in Langji and Yellow River and also uh, flooding. So in 1998, there is a big flooding in Yangji River and Yellow River and caused a lot of life loss in China. So Chinese government start to uh, launch several uh, national level key uh, forest program. One is the uh, National uh, for, uh, Natural Forest Pro Protection Pro Program. We also call it logging ban. And the second one is the one uh, I involved in is the conversion of cropland to forest program. Uh, the uh, the conversion of cropland to forest program started in 1999. Uh, and it's uh, it's uh, the first round of that uh, program uh, is start from 1999 until 2016 this year, and the second round of that uh, has started from 2014. Uh, it will last until 2020. Yeah. So uh, the goal of the program. One is for ecological uh, restoration to combine the desertification in the northern part of China and to reduce the water, severe water soil erosion and to, um, to increase the land, land productivity uh, around the area. And, and also poverty alleviation is a very important part of that program. At the very beginning, because the CCLP is the top uh, priorities is to reduce uh, water soil erosion to the ecological purpose is the main target. But uh, literally we found if we don't provide uh, to, to improve uh, farmers' livelihood, then farmers won't maintain and care about trees. So we immediately after we started the program to, to, to uh, have many uh, uh, a policy approach to help farmers to increase their livelihood, such as provide subsidies to them. And that's one hand, that's the main policies from the beginning until now. And also, we in, this, uh, in the second phase of the first round that, is from, that started from 2008 until this year, we also start like a uh, uh, sub-project under CCIP like uh, uh, like energy, rural energy, infrastructure, and uh, improve the uh, cropland productivity, something like that. 
the, the main purpose of that is to strengthen the development capacity of the farmers and also rural livelihood. Because uh, China's uh, 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 historical and agriculture uh, civilization countries, for thousands of years, uh, our farmers uh, used to cutting down forestry and uh, to, uh, to do agriculture there. For thousand years, it's like that. But since, this, since CFP, we convert the, the cut down uh, the degraded forest land, the, especially the, the, the st steep slope, slope land. Actually, the steep slope crop land previously are forestry. So in Chinese history, this is the first time Chinese government provides subsidies for farmers to convert their cropland to forestry. And also in, uh, in Chinese thousand of years history, farmers always to have to be levied, sometimes very heavy levied tax to submit to government. But this time, government, government provide money to farmers themselves to 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 to, to reforestation. So that's a big uh, milestone in Chinese history. Yeah, I think that's uh, very important. Or you, I think it's unique in Ch in, in the world. We set up a, a very strict financial arrangement or institutional arrangement. That means all the money, all the subsidies, were directly. We call it. Uh, um, we call it uh, special uh, money channel uh, directly from the money directly from the Ministry of Finance to, to each of farmers' bank account. Each of CCFP farmers will have their own bank account to receive the money. Uh, uh, I, 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 I had to say that bank account is not only for CCFP. Uh, other uh, agricultural subsidies also goes to that bank. That, that bank. For sure, because uh, uh, if you have a chance to visit our uh, CCP farmers, they uh, they really appreciate appreciate. Uh, they get money and they see the they see the their uh, village change the lot. Uh, trees, uh, green, uh, the village become green and the water become clean, and they told us something like that. Yeah, change a lot. Uh, at, at the very beginning, I don't believe that, actually, because uh, farmers, they always concern their short, uh, sh uh, short uh, uh, in income returns. Um, but because um, uh, 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 it's the program uh, already lasted so many years, and they do see the changes of the environmental change. The milestone. It's the first time farmers got money from government. I, 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 before that, they always submit money to the government. So at the very beginning, a lot of farmers don't believe that. So uh, uh, at the uh, previous, uh, at the initial stage, uh, all the participants uh, of the CCFP are the leaders of the village leaders, and uh, they they have to they have to uh, take it as a, as a, as a task to be finished. But gradually, the farmers see that they really got money from government. So more and more, they are happy to involved in. And uh, and uh, some of the places, uh, especially in a very remote part of the China, like Guizhou, and uh, the, there is uh, uh, places uh, like uh, Bijie. Now, that's the, the, the land seat is very harsh, and the, all the land is uh, the steep, like uh, 60, uh, 40 degrees, uh, um, even more than that. There is. There was serious uh, land use degradation, but no of the none of the land has been become CCFP. Yeah. Yeah. But this time, the they are the for the second round. They are the largest part of uh, program. The high farmers very happy to participate. Yeah. I think technical. Uh, uh, 
technical support a very important part of CCIP's uh, su success. As I, I told you before, the, our uh, local uh, foresters are very good, and uh, and it, uh, at the very beginning they they just use uh, use their hand use the old technique. But right now, uh, uh, China is quite good, not quite good compared with U.S. It's still still uh, a little bit uh, advanced to use G's to 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 use land planning. So at the second round of CCP. We required that the uh, CCP land use planning must be use G's, and each of the plots of the household has been has to be uh, four G's points. Uh, so it's huge of work. But I visited a very remote county. It's a uh, it's a Tibetan county, a very remote in near, near uh, in the angle of Yunnan province. I saw that, the, the, the picture, uh, I can show you that. It's extremely surprised me. Yeah. Each of the plot has a G's position and uh, with their bank account in that and the farmer's stamp, farmer's finger stamp uh, on that. It's, it's really surprising. Come to Ethiopia actually uh, is my long design because for years ago I read uh, about uh, literature about uh, afforestation in Asia, uh, in Africa. I, I know that uh, in Ethiopia they also have a smallholder reforestation and uh, the, 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 the landscape and uh, the temperature is quite similar, uh, semi-dried and dried in, in China. Uh, yeah, so I think and uh, before I come here, I read some history about Ethiopia. I found that um, even the institutional uh, structure maybe have some similar. So I do expect we can e exchange a lot of things, especially through yesterday's discussion. We have many things in common and we can share, in, uh, sh surely share knowledge and uh, yeah, learn a lot. Uh, uh, several things. Uh, one is the uh, um, uh, smallholder role in uh, uh, forest restoration and land tenure and land tenure arrangement. Even even it it is not diff difficult different with China, and also conflict between conflict land use between agriculture and forestry, and also. Uh, and uh, uh, also the incentives, yeah. So maybe they like lack of incentives and the Chinese uh, experience, and also bamboo. I think bamboo is a great potential for China and Ethiopia to 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 cooperate. Yeah, and as I know that uh, FAO recently received a uh, huge money from Chinese government that. That uh, 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 money were uh, mainly used for South-South cooperation. So I, I will tr I'll try to, <laughs> to, to, to use that to help to contact some uh, our uh, FIO. Yes, yes, um, because from her pre uh, his presentation, I can see there are a long history between uh, Ethiopia and China and bamboo uh, technical cooperation. But uh, for social economic and policy uh, exchange, uh, still not started. So I think there is great potential to uh, to to see uh, how the, the technical apply to Ethiopia and uh, uh, to help to not only technical one but also marketing and uh, something like that. Yeah, um, in, in China, the tenure system is, uh, how to say, after the reform, it's quite good, I think. Uh, it's, uh, for cropland, each farmer has a very clear land, ten, uh, land. and uh, for forestry, we start also start for, uh, we call it collective forest tenure reform, and from that reform, uh, uh, the previous owned collective, I mean, I mean the, the village or township owned forestry has been delivered to each of the households. 
So farmers do have some incentives to involve in forestry management. Yeah, yeah, so, it's, uh, it's currently it's quite good. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, it's different with crops because uh, in China, forestry always has uh, two functions. One is economic and another is ecological. So we have a very strict uh, forest management uh, laws and the regulations, especially concerned about uh, uh, forest management. We have very law, we very strict laws, for, especially for harvesting. We have a quarter, national quarter for harvesting timber. So, uh, uh, for instance, uh, but we, we divided forest into two groups. One is that we call it ecological function forest, and another is commercial forest. Uh, uh, at, um, previously, both of them has been strictly under the uh, harvesting uh, uh, quarter. But right now, we released, uh, relaxed the commercial part. We, we uh, issued several uh, policies, try to help farmers to have a more alternative uh, autonomy to cutting the trees, uh, something like that. But still, it's an uh, it's, uh, argument. I think yeah, they, their land, uh, forest land, is also owned by government. The one thing they can learn is to uh, have a certificate for forest land, uh, not, not maybe not ownership, but a certificate to use that land for a long period of time, for instance, 50 years, uh, 60 years, or seven, even 70 years, then farmers may have a more secured uh, land tenure sense. They, they may have incentive to involve in, yeah. Yeah, for the first round of CSIP, we have a very strict uh, requirement for 80% must be ecological trees and 20% uh, economic trees. And, uh, but between, we, 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 we designed, especially designed for CSFP, we call it uh, double, double the trees, like uh, chestnut, we, we call it uh, ecological trees. Bamboo is also, we call it ecological. There are some flexibility. But for the second round of CSFP, CSFP uh, farmers can choose what they prefer to, 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 to plant. If the place is good for fruit, fruit trees, farmers can prove. But for the higher and uh, very low yield of the crop uh, soil, farmers will autonom automatically choose for ecological trees. It's, uh, in bamboo forestry, it's very important. We, we, re all, uh, we re really regard it as a forestry. Uh, especially concerned about e e e ecological uh, uh, impacts. So uh, we encourage, even in CCFP, some of the places suitable for bamboo. Bamboo is part of a CCFP plantation, yeah. There is no problem. So yeah. you think it's a, it's a good way to help forest landscape restoration bamboo? Yeah, yes, especially for the ecological purpose, because it can uh, stable the soil and yeah. Yes, yes, for for China, the forestry have uh, even though we, we develop very fast, but uh, we still have uh, several challenges. Uh, one thing is is uh, for technical part of that, all the most of the uh, forestation are monoculture, so um, we we need to um, improve that in many many ways. To, to diversify our forestry. So uh, that's the one challenge. And another is the, for CCFP also, because the first round of CCFP already finished this year, the subsidies. So some of the, some of the farmers uh, already go back to their previous uh, land use uh, to cut down the trees and to crop again, but it's not so big, I think, just a very, 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 the places normally has a higher yield of crop near urban, so the land value is much higher than forestry. But not common. But really, this this we need to adjust our or maybe postpone the policy. That's that's one thing for CCP. And uh, the third one I think is because of the urbanization. 
uh, the young uh, the rural people move to the city. All, most of the forests, no one take care of that. Even abandoned forestry, no uh, less of lack of uh, management, and uh, even the trees there, nobody could have a capacity to cut it down. And also, even 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 some agricultural land has been abandoned. Yeah. Yes, yes, I think uh, uh, maybe through uh, this day's discussion we can learn from Nepal, Ethiopia. Mm, their way, I think, the most valuable thing is, is their participatory approach. I, uh, in China, we also, uh, we, we also uh, know the participatory approach, but we are used to the top-down, and right now we are combining these two together. Uh, I'm, I'm very happy to be a uh, Seaforce project because I, I'm a researcher uh, close linked with uh, policy makers. So I can uh, quickly know the inside of the policy. At the same time, I can um, as, as much as broadly to accept the academic way of, of the research and uh, quickly mixed and the transit between the two. So that's both benefit for China and also for Sibyl. That's, that's what I want to see, yeah. Yeah, um, uh, right now I'm, I'm just uh, start to design the second round of CSFP monitoring uh, framework and uh, which I will uh, use uh, the experience of our first round. We will make the monitoring more accurate. So for instance, we will combine the ecological and the economic uh, monitoring together. And also we will use control group so we can uh, provide more accurate poli policy advisory ad advice to the government.